My name is Dr. Mike Searcy. For those of you that don't know me, I teach uh, in the communication program here both uh, a couple of days a week on the main campus as well as a couple of days a week down at Whitney City at the Recruiter Center. And as such, uh, I teach in the uh, interpersonal, the intercultural, as well as the public speaking area. And today we're going to spend some time thinking about, discussing, and talking about teamwork communication. In the time that we have, there is not enough in order to really get into all the facets of teamwork and, and even small group communication as we are able. And so part of what we're doing today is scheduled to get us thinking about it, get us talking about it, and possibly moving us down the road as we leave today, coming up with our own ideas and extending upon this as we go. We'll take a moment here while we get got a couple more people coming in. Okay. So what we're going to do today is essentially look at just some of the main concepts of teamwork communication and the wisdom of collaboration. With that, let's go ahead and turn over to page two of the workbook that you've got. A couple of things to think about. Henry Ford said, when we talk about that wisdom of collaboration, that coming together is a beginning. And if you think about that, it's only a beginning because groups that actually work together well have been together for quite some time. Coming together is only the beginning. Keeping together is progress, and working together is success. And though, although that sounds really easy, it's far from it. It takes an awful lot of work. Especially if you look at that cartoon on, on the middle of page two there, we're talking, it's actually illustrating a really great concept on how the rest of the team can actually hold other people up when they need to be held up because the bottom drops out in front of us. Teamwork is so important that it is virtually impossible for you to reach your heights, reach the uh, I'm sorry, reach the heights of your capabilities or make the money that you want to make without becoming very good at it by Brian Tracy. Those of you that know Brian Tracy, he's a very famous and professional motivator and coach. Let's talk about the types of teams, page three. Teams come in a large variety, and here's just some of them that we are more typical that we're going to see on a regular basis. Some of these may actually be ad hoc. Who knows what ad hoc means? Alice, what is ad hoc? Exactly. Ad hoc is Latin for to this, meaning it's only it's a group that's gathered just for this, and then they're finished. Informal groups. These could be game players, people that gather around to watch a particular TV show, book readers, TV watchers, etc. Study and support groups. Groups that are specifically getting together for learning various skills, content, or coping with various situations. Staff groups, they work together and meet to discuss various work issues and policies. They don't have to be teams, they can just be groups. There's a difference, we'll talk about that when we're finished, before we're finished. Task forces, very specific problem focused, very specific problem oriented. Governance groups and committees, they represent larger bodies to come up with proposals for the whole group. Focus groups, particular population to discuss issues related to anything from marketing to policy, opinions. Self-managing teams, any group who is responsible for all aspects of their efforts. Management teams, managers from various departments who are responsible for coordinating the big picture efforts for the organization. Quality teams, individuals drawn from different departments to improve the quality of the experience, the product, etc. across that organization. Project teams, specific task force concentrating on a specific project, for example, marketing a product, major research reports, things like this. Creative teams, 
a group that is brought together to use their talents specific to create a project like a TV show or an advertising campaign or a recruiting campaign. Or healthcare teams, collective healthcare individuals coordinating care for a specific patient. When we talk about any of these teams, and there are others, but when we talk about these teams, oftentimes we're talking about the benefit of heterogeneity, having different people from different departments or different viewpoints coming together so that they can bring those and bear those different viewpoints on the same problem. That's incredibly helpful. If you look at uh, the, other, the quote in here, heterogeneous teams, they profit from the various members' groups' different perspectives because the more diverse the members of a group, the more angles from which they can see a problem. If the only tool that we have is a hammer, suddenly what? Every problem looks like a nail, right? When I've got different people with different ideas, we have a tendency to actually look at things from different perspectives, to see things from different angles. To that end, as we start talking about this, we're going to practice a little group, pra a group uh, project here. We're going to spend a little bit of time. And I'm going to take the three at this table. I'm going to include you if I might. And include you two. Put six over there. I'm going to ask you two to sit at this table over here and just observe. We're going to uh, move, continue on here uh, with, with some of our conversation. The actual solution wasn't necessarily the point of the exercise as much as the interaction and the group work that we were doing. But with respect to the exercise, who was our murderer? Emily. What's the weapon? Skewer. Skewer. Motive? The loss of inheritance. What time? Four fifteen. About. Okay. All right. For those of you that were observing, talk to me. What did the members do at the beginning of the discussion that helped their process, or what did they need to do that they did not? They were beginning to work together and they weren't a group at the beginning. Okay. They were just people. Sure. And then we watched them move toward working together and talking together and having conversation and everybody was taking part. Okay. Okay, good. Then they kind of developed the plan with once they start reading a lot of clues, they know some of them had time, then they start developing the plan. Okay, let's find these out and go to Took them a while to get their plan together. Alright, so lessons here. Get a plan together. Can we agree on that? Yes. Need a later. Do we? Mm, not necessarily, but the group itself can wait. Okay. What else? What did you guys come up with? What did you look at? What kind of order were they putting in? Okay. All right. So they had a plan. Okay. Did one person come up with the plan, or were they all looking together? Okay. Okay. Other comments? Okay. So get a plan. How about some clear goals? As this group was talking right away, we wanted to go ahead and get a timeline. Sounds like a clear goal to me. Our first order priority, put a timeline together. Okay. How about adherence to a process? 
Once we've got the process, we actually follow it. Isn't it surprising when that doesn't happen? Or shall we say sometimes more, sometimes it's, it's normal when it doesn't happen. It's surprising when it does happen. Are we all getting together? Are we following that process? Okay, it requires both individual accountability as well as mutual accountability, right? If we divided up all those clues, did we actually read all the clues to everyone so that everyone had an idea of what was going on? Or did we inadvertently or otherwise hold some back? Research shows us that the ideal group for actual work is about four to seven. It needs anything over seven, and we wind up having what? Subgroups that wind up forming, we, or we wind up finding somebody operating as a, an actual manager, leader, and dictating process. But then we don't wind up working as a group, as a team anyway, certainly as a group. And for something like this, as far as a lesson in teamwork communication, we expect everyone in, some, in a project like this to think, everyone to work, and everyone to do. Whereas, in a lot, of, a lot of groups, only certain people are allowed to think and dictate, and other people have to do, right? Hmm? Governance groups, sure, sure. Well begun is half done. Let's look at page six. Tuckman's group development model, keys to teamwork communication. There are four main processes that, have, that are often described in the development of a team. Forming, storming, norming, and performing. We talk about forming, that's exactly what you all mentioned. We all get together as a group of individuals. We all get together as a group of individuals. So what happens? We don't necessarily maybe even like each other, maybe we don't know each other, but we have to somehow figure out where we're going to match in order to get this task done, because at this moment, right now, that's what we are, a group of individuals, trying to figure out, is it possible for us to even collaborate? Is it possible for us to work? Okay, and so if you look at that uh, graph at the bottom, the chart at the bottom, what are the behaviors of forming? The purpose and the goals for the team are unclear. Members feel varying degrees of commitment. Some are actually here to get into it, roll up their sleeves, and other people are here because in some cases they were told to sit in the room. Members are cautious. They don't initiate. They avoid responsibility. Communication is low, and few members often dominate. Members are dependent on directive leadership at the early stages here. So we've got to tell them what to do, what, what's going on, what are we thinking about. So what are their tasks? Build a common purpose. Clearly establish the expectations of the customers or sponsors. Understand personal expectations. Clarify accountability, recognition, and rewards. Assess resources. See who has what to contribute. Who's the logical, critical mind? Who's the one to actually come up with a process? Who's the, who are the people that can contribute other things that will help us in this particular task? The leader might provide direction and it drives the team process. Once we get formed, let's talk about storming. Personality clashes happen here. Storming doesn't mean we're racing ahead and doing our work. Storming means that we may actually be experiencing clashes of personality that might be equivalent to storms. Personality clashes possible. Functions and direction needs to be negotiated. Depending upon the maturity of the individuals involved, some groups never get out of the stage. And oftentimes it's a wonder if they get their task completed at all. So what are the behaviors? The differences and confusion arise over goals and roles. Struggles erupt over approaches, direction, and control. Team members react toward leadership with counterproductive behaviors. The team is uncertain about how to deal with issues openly. The team wrestles with issues of communication, and the members act from an independent stance. Are we a team? Perhaps not. We certainly are a group. 
Perhaps not yet quite this year. Let's go look at norming. One goal and a mutual plan finally emerges. One goal and a mutual plan. How about that? Team gains confidence, feels a sense of momentum. The what, the how, the who, and the when become clarified. Team develops agreements on approaches, goals, communication, and leadership roles. The team builds relationships with externals, any, any other group that they may have to be dealing with. And the members begin to relate interdependently. They actually start to figure out how to click, how to work, how to accomplish things. And finally, performing. Motivated, knowledgeable, competent, and autonomous. Some groups actually reach this stage. And quite frankly, it's not as often as we think. And so, if you're sitting back thinking every group I've ever been has been that successful, we've all been, well, take a second. Because this is oftentimes where we strive to be. What are those behaviors? Members take full responsibility for tasks and relationships. The team achieves effective and satisfying results. Team takes the initiative, continually assess external forces. The team facilitates itself easily through the various stages. Members work proactively for the benefits of the team. And there are various tasks that are associated with these, as you can see as well. There are a couple other when we talk about renorming, maybe, or transforming, as groups may have to redefine themselves and readjust themselves. But when we look at a team, another thing that we want to glance at if a team is set up between commitment, accountability, and skills, okay, accountability plus commitment usually equals what? Personal growth. Commitment and accountability. We find out what we are capable of in contribution to the team. Personal growth develops and happens here. Commitment and skills. What comes out of that? Collective work product. What have we been able to actually accomplish as a group? Skills and accountability. Here we're talking about performance results. That which we are measured oftentimes by external forces and, and, and external reports. All this starts with communication. All this starts with having clear vision and a plan. So what's the difference between a work group and a team? Page seven. Where you are and what, what do you want out of your environment? Active choices need to take place. A working group, strong, clearly focused leader. A team has shared leadership roles. Are you in a team? Are you in a working group? A working group has individual accountability. A team has both individual and mutual accountability. A working group, the group's purpose is the same as the broader organization mission. So there could be lots of working groups not doing exactly the same thing. A team has a very specific team purpose that the team delivers. A working group often works on individual work products, a team collective work products. A working group can run efficient meetings, have an agenda, point by point, in and out. Efficient meetings, a team. Get a little messier. Encourages open-ended discussion and active problem-solving meetings. It may be a little messier, it's usually more satisfying. A working group measures its effectiveness indirectly by its influence on others. Financial performance of the business and things like this. Whereas a team measures performance directly by assessing collective work products. What have we produced? What, it's, what is its quality. A working group discusses, decides, and delegates, whereas a team discusses, decides, and does real work together.
I always promise to keep you in and out of in and out within an hour, and we're going to hold to that today. Today is all about coming up with ideas and getting our minds thinking about how are we working in and around team? What teams are we a part of? Or what groups are we a part of? Can we make them into teams and can we actually create teams through the way we communicate with others in that team? 